Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today is my in-depth review of the beer craft and I mentioned in my unboxing and first look video that I would try to craft with this machine for a good four to six weeks or so and try to really put it through its paces, use it as my one and only if I could and I've done just that. And what I wanted to do was um, film this and share what my concluding thoughts are on it after using it as not just my primary, but I really did use it for just about everything that I could. And that includes die cutting, embossing with uh, your standard embossing folder, 3D embossing folder, and I will also show you because the Better Press by Spellbinders and the Glimmer by Spellbinders also will fit through this machine. I'll show you some comparisons of um, panels that I've better pressed and glimmered uh, between this machine and the Spellbinders Platinum with um, their universal plate system. So I'm not going to do any actual demonstration of the machine and, and go through uh, how it works. You can catch my first look and unboxing video for that. I'll link to it in the upper right hand corner. Uh, but just to give you, if you're totally unfamiliar with this machine, just to kind of um, give you an overview of it. This is a manual die cutting machine, so there is a crank um, on the side with the handle there. There is, it's, it, it's very heavy. This is a pretty heavy duty machine, um, but it does fold up so that it can be rather compact. These platforms, you just pull them down and push them in and you would do that on this side as well um, but they also double as storage so you both both sides the, the front and the back these lift up and you can um, you can store your handle in there when you're not crafting with it because this um, will let you detach it so you can do that or you can store um, other tools uh, when I was using it as my primary machine I put my low tack tape in these little storage compartments compartments which was kind of nice so that um, is kind of handy to have the thing that makes this a little bit different from other machines is that instead of a lot of different plates and a lot of different combinations for all the things you do all of that adjusting with these two dials on the side your top dial will kind of get you in the ballpark of the amount of pressure that you need depending on what you're trying to do with this machine, whether it's to die cut, to letterpress, or do 2D embossing, or to do 3D embossing. So that gets you to roughly the right amount of pressure. But if you're like me and you use a lot of different brand materials then you might need to dial it in further because every every brand every manufacturer kind of uh is a little bit different and the thickness of dies is different the thickness of embossing folders particularly is different and even within the same brands there are some dies that are like I know Tonic does this and Crafters Companion where they have what's called mixed media dies which are a, the cutting blade is a little bit thicker so that it can cut through thicker materials so even within the same company you might find dies that are a little bit different and so the bottom dial lets you do some micro tuning you can either loosen the pressure um, and make it less um, tight or you can increase the pressure and tighten it and make it so that it uh, basically all it's doing is like raising and lowering the rollers in this machine so as your plates go through the machine there's two rollers at the top and the bottom that you know kind of uh, when you crank this that that's what actually rolls those uh, your plates through 
and the dials on the side either raise or bring together those two rollers, which either increases the distance and hence, you know, um, loosens the pressure or it uh, will um, decrease the distance between the two rollers and create more pressure. So that's, that's generally how the machine works. And it comes with just three plates. You have your platform, your adapter and your cutting mat. And that's it. So you just use some combination of these plates and you do all of your adjustment with the dials on the side. And just to jump to the conclusion, if you don't want to watch to the end, um, because what I'm going to do, I'm not going to actually demonstrate what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the plate combination that I've started to use for the different brand products that I tend to use the most. And so um, if you want to hang for that, you can. And then I'm going to show some compare and contrast of better pressing through this machine versus the Spellbinders Platinum machine and glimmering through this machine as compared to the Spellbinders Platinum. But if all you're here for is my um, kind of concluding um, thoughts, on this machine now having used it as my primary um, and one and only if I could. I don't think there were many if any occasions where I did not um, use this. Actually, I, I actually know one. There were sometimes um, if I was doing maybe some partial die cutting or die cutting into a full card front I had to go to my bigger machine because of just where I needed to cut into. There just wasn't enough space for me to position my top cutting plate to do exactly what I wanted to do. I think that was pretty much the only occasion where I um, found that, you know, this didn't work for me. But... It's not because of the type of machine, that's more a function of the size of machine. And this machine that I have in front of me is their six inch wide, but they do have a larger machine that is um, the equivalent of your A4 machine. So the equivalent of the large platinum, I think it's nine inches wide. So if I had the bigger machine, then problem solved, I wouldn't have had to go to my platinum for for those couple of occasions. But otherwise, I was able to really do everything through here. And I quite like the fact that there aren't a bajillion plates to juggle. You basically have the three. And for the most part, um, I did end up using some combination, some combination of these. Um, if you read the manual, the adapter hardly gets used at all, but I actually ended up using it in my uh, sandwich combinations quite a lot. But it's still pretty minimal compared to a lot of other, well, the universal plate system for one, I think has quite a few different, um, different plates that go come with it. And you do the rest of your adjusting uh, with the two dials. And I really like that. I like literally dialing in the pressure. And to me, and everybody's going to be a little bit different, to me that seemed easier to do than playing around with like paper shims, you know, um, cutting plate combinations, things like that. So... This I found to be easy and and enjoyable almost <laughs> to because it's kind of like a game. You just kind of dial it in until you get it just right. And so I I I enjoyed that process. But um, as I was discovering what worked for me, I made myself like a little cheat sheet and I jotted I jotted the notes down. So um, so that's what I've I've done. And so let me just show you some results and how I've been actually using this because I actually use it a little bit differently than um, how, how the booklet 
recommend. <laughs> okay, so for your basic die cutting, um, I primarily I, I use a lot of Spellbinders products because I am um, an influencer on the Spellbinders team and so I have a lot of um, I basically have play combinations for you know everything that I generally use but that is Spellbinders so if you're a big Spellbinders fan um, hopefully you find this useful but I will have some play combinations for Sizzix um, embossing folders a little bit later too. So for simple die cutting with the Spellbinders dies, um, the Beercraft platform uh, starts off the sandwich combination, then the die would come next, face up, and then your paper, then the Beercraft cutting mat, and you're cutting up, you're cutting up into this cutting mat. And you just set it to their recommended die cutting setting at the top, no adjustment at the bottom, and it works just fine. That's the same for the Beercraft die that came included with my machine when I got it. Then um, that that is fairly standard for how Beercraft recommends to uh, die cut, and that worked beautifully with their dies as well. However, I'm not a huge fan of die cutting face up. <laughs> I like to die cut face down into the paper as well. You know, I figured if I'm going to use this the way that I use my platinum, because uh, I don't use, I don't generally use the universal plate system with my platinum. I really like cutting into a magic mat. So I have just a totally different <laughs> thing going on with my platinum. And basically, I only use the universal plate system when I'm embossing because I find that that is like, they've really dialed that in and it's 100% every time. So I always use the universal plate system for embossing. But for die cutting, I die cut into the magic mat because then you, um, this thing lasts forever and it looks barely beat up, but I have used it a ton. This is the first and only that I've ever bought. Um, I actually bought a two pack of it. Uh, might have, I might have gotten two two packs of it just in case. I don't know why, because I don't think I'll even, uh, I think they come sold as uh, sets of two, and I don't even think I need to, because <laughs> it's a self-healing mat. If it does get warped, which it can, um, just take a heat tool to it and it'll just flatten right back out and it's great. And then if, if there's too much like paper that's getting stuck, you can just wash this with a little soap and water and it'll, it'll get clean. So what I've been doing, um, that, that might also explain why my cutting mat isn't super cut into, um, but trust me, I've been using this a fair amount for the last four to six weeks. It's just that I've been cutting into my magic mat because I wanted to use the machine, like I said, the way that I would use the machine. Um, not just for research and review, but for, for reels. And so I found that this plate combination worked for me. The platform, the magic mat, paper, the die face down cutting into my magic mat, then the cutting mat, and because this is a thicker sandwich combination than the standard, because the standard doesn't have the magic mat, I had to change the setting at the top. Instead of the die cut setting, I switched it all the way to the 3D emboss setting. And I will... Um, I'll let you know, uh, maybe at the end, how how I came to kind of uh, dial these in and like the logic that I use for that. But for now, that's basically where I landed with die cutting. So die cut down into the magic mat and then your plate combination otherwise is the same, the platform and the cutting mat on top. Then the dial setting is 3D emboss. That seemed to work just fine. And I should say that your mileage may vary with uh, these plate combinations that I am suggesting. So uh, don't take this to be definitive 
because it's certainly um, just what works for me and the papers I'm using, the dyes I'm using, but hopefully it kind of gets you in the ballpark. Um, the beauty of it is that with this machine, once you're in the right ballpark, you can always fine tune with the micro um, you know, setting at the bottom dial here. So that, and the fact that every machine is probably like a little bit different, um, you might have to do that in any case. But um, that's where I arrived at for die cutting. Now, for embossing, I, uh, this machine that I got did come bundled with some uh, craft supplies. So they did include a die set um, and they included an embossing folder. Now, what I did was I, uh, I did actually use my caliper tool here and I measured the embossing folders. So the 2D embossing folder from Bureaucraft is 2.07 millimeters, give or take. The 2D embossing folder from Spellbinders is 3.29. So that's a difference of 1.2 um, and then some. And just, just for additional comparison, um, I have notes all over here, but just to focus a little bit, I did measure the Sizzix one as well. So the Sizzix um, emboss is 2.15, which puts it just just a smidge thicker than the Beercraft one. So by measuring, um, and this is kind of my first tip, you don't necessarily, if you don't have the tool to actually measure it precisely, just, just compare the thickness between um, if you do get the machine with, you know, the, the, um, embossing folder and the dies that come with, because the machine gives you some settings to work from, um, you can just compare their, the 2D embossing folder from Beercraft with your, your brand embossing folder. If it's about the same, then you can use the same settings. If it's thicker, then you should adjust so that you loosen up the pressure on the machine. And if it's thinner, which I can't imagine it being thinner than this, but you know, if it were thinner, then you would tighten up the pressure to account for that. So that the sandwich that ultimately goes through and the space through the machine all roughly equals each other. So with their uh, 2D embossing folder, their recommended plate combination is the platform, the platform, their 2D embossing folder, and then the cutting mat. And then you run that through the um, letterpress slash, you know, uh, 2D embossing folder at the top, zero fine tuning on the second dial. So this is the standard uh, plate combination and setting for a Beercraft folder, embossing folder. But the Spellbinders embossing folder is actually... Um, as I showed earlier, it's 1.2 millimeters thicker than the Beercraft one. So that means if I was going to use this exact combination, just, you know, the same combination as before, but just swap out this folder, this is going to be really tight going through the machine. May not even go through at the same setting. So... That is um, kind of, you know, the thinking behind, well, how do I start to go about adjusting so that this goes through and gets me the same, um, you know, uh, level of emboss? Well, the combination that I arrived at was instead of using the cutting mat as my top uh, plate, I use the adapter, which is thinner than the cutting mat. So for a standard embossing folder, my plate combination ends up being the Beercraft platform, the embossing folder, 
with the paper inside and the adapter plate. And I send that through at the 2D um, letterpress setting. No adjustment at the bottom. So all I've done was switched out the cutting mat for the adapter. And I, I did approach this rather scientifically because I did actually measure the two mats. So the Bearcraft cutting mat is three millimeters thick and the adapter is 1.88 millimeters thick. So you can see that the adapter is about, it's just under uh, 1.2 millimeters thinner than the cutting mat. But remember, our spellbinders embossing folder is about 1.2 millimeters thicker than the beer craft one. So basically, it's a good swap, right? So these two combined, roughly equivalent to a thinner mat with a thicker top plate. And that that brings them roughly pretty much, you know, not dead on the exact same thickness, but kind of close. So that's sort of how I arrived at that. Like I did it mathematically, um, but you can just kind of play around because you can even just tell, you know, when you compare the two embossing folders and when you hold them that the Spellbinders one is thicker. So, um, so that's one way to, to um, d start to dial in. And here's the results. So... On the right, this is the Spellbinders panel uh, run through the Spellbinders machine. So everything Spellbinders on this on this panel. Spellbinders standard embossing folder, Spellbinders universal plate system through the Spellbinders platinum machine. So you can see that lovely emboss, all that lovely detail. This on the left is Spellbinders embossing folder. The uh, Beercraft platform embossing folder with paper inside the adapter, and you run that through the 2D setting, and this is what you get. So you can kind of see that it's not quite as well defined of an emboss, but I could have easily gotten you know, a panel to get to to match that level of detail by doing some fine tune adjusting. I decided not to just so that you can see, well, what does it look like with the most basic setting of just putting it on the 2D emboss setting at the top. If I wanted to get this level of emboss, all I would need to do is use that same sandwich, um, that I arrived at and then just tighten the dial at the bottom a little bit to increase the pressure and then you know give it an, an even deeper emboss. Totally possible but this um, this panel looks lovely. If you didn't see this by <laughs> comparison I don't think you would say that this was a bad emboss. So um, so that's why I wanted to leave it, just to show you know what you would get natively before doing the micro tuning to really adapt or adjust it. Um, but it's still very very lovely. So that is 2D embossing with the Spellbinders folder. Then um, the Sizzix, I have this. It's an older embossing folder, super cute. It's got all the emojis. So this one is. By comparison, um, the 2D embossing folder, it's of Sizzix. It's it's not all that much thicker than the Beercraft one, like 0 0.08 millimeter. So I basically use the exact same sandwich as the Beercraft, and the same setting as well. Just just 2D emboss uh, slash letterpress nothing going on at the bottom so zero at the bottom and I embossed and so what I ended up getting is this which is lovely 
a pretty nice it's a pretty deep emboss because it is the folder itself is a little bit thicker but you can see um it's it's really really lovely now what i want i don't have a sizzix machine so i can't give you like a side-by-side -side comparison of likely how sizzix intended it to look but but the universal plate system from spellbinders actually has a um i'm sure if you have this you probably are familiar but on the listing for the universal plate system, it tells you all of the different folders that are compatible and it tells you what sandwich combination to use. So I took the recommended plate combination for a Sizzix standard embossing folder, which happens to be the, this is the Spellbinders um, universal system. So the platform, uh, so that's a cutting plate then your embossing folder, and then another cutting plate. So that's that's the recommendation of um, the sandwich combination for the universal plate system. And this is what I got. So there's a side by side. So pretty darn close to the same. So that's um, left is Bearcraft with basically the same 2D emboss uh, sandwich that they recommend. Right is a Sizzix folder through the Spellbinders universal plate system and platinum machine on their recommended settings. And I mean, I have to give like if I had to give the edge to one, I would say this one is a little bit more... It feels like the emboss is a little bit more uniform. Like, here it feels like the pressure is not quite as deep as maybe some of the other areas along the edge. So, if I had to if I had to pick one to give an edge to, I would say the, um, the Spellbinders machine. But again... You know, I could have dialed this in more because this is not at the, um, this was at zero adjustment at the bottom, uh, dial. So there's room to, there was room to adjust. I just chose not to. So that's the standard folder from Sizzix. Then moving on to the 3D embossing folder. No, the machine itself did not come with a 3D embossing folder that is Beercraft brand, so there's nothing to really compare, um, you know, the the system to. So, um, what I do have is the sandwich and the dial settings for the Spellbinders, and as well for the Sizzix um, 3D embossing folder. Okay, so with the um 3d embossing folder again i i did take some measurements and so i have the um spellbinders 3d embossing folder is four millimeters thick and look at the sizzix one 6.35 quite a difference there so um that's definitely gonna um, make a pretty big impact to the <laughs> to um, the settings and the plate combination. So for the let's do the spellbinders first. For the spellbinders 3D embossing folder, the plate combination I used was the platform, the Beercraft platform, the spellbinders um, embossing folder. And then I used the adapter plate and I set the top dial to 3D emboss and then I set the bottom dial to minus three. So minus three is actually making it more tight. So um, that got me to the pressure that I thought I needed to get a good emboss and then I ran this through 
you know, again, the all spellbinders, right? The universal plates, the the whole shebang over there. And so here are the resulting panels. On the left is the beer craft. So that's with the platform, your 3D embossing folder, the adapter plate, 3D emboss setting, and then a minus three at the bottom. And then on the right is just the recommended universal plate system from Spellbinders. And that's the result. So pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, I switched it left and right just in case there's a lighting difference, but this is the beer craft. Beer craft on the left, Spellbinders on the right. And pretty, pretty good for, for both. Um, pretty consistent um, across both as well. I mean, I would say these are pretty equal. Um, maybe this is a little bit of a deeper emboss. I don't know. They're pretty equal, I think. Uh, but in this case, I did dial it in. I did go to a negative three, so I did um, dial it in quite a bit to get to um, that level of emboss. So I was, I was aiming in this case to get it to um, match this uh, because at, at the zero setting, it wasn't really doing much of an emboss at all. So once I start adjusting, I wanted to go ahead and adjust it all the way. So you can see that you can really, and three, three isn't even the tightest. You can go up to five. So if you felt that these were off still you could still go a little bit tighter if you, if you needed to get like an even um, greater emboss on that. So that is the Spellbinders and so I did also run a 3D Sizzix embossing folder through and you've probably seen me work with this one. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's um, the Eileen Hull uh, sweater and really, really lovely. It has a beautiful, beautiful emboss. And as I mentioned, the Sizzix 3D folder is about over two millimeters thicker than your standard um, uh, the 3D emboss of the Spellbinders one. So what I ended up using as the combination through the beer craft machine was the platform. And that's the beer craft platform. The uh, 3D embossing folder and that's it. Top dial set to 3D emboss. Then the bottom dial, I tighten it to minus four. That's minus four out of five. So just about as tight as you can um, go with it. And this is the result. So pretty, pretty good. Really like that. Now with the Spellbinders machine, as I mentioned, um, and I, I haven't showed this. I, I men keep mentioning the universal plate system and I keep talking about how um, the beer craft with just the three plates, it's a, a lot less to juggle in terms of plates. This is the Spellbinders universal plate system. You've got a platform, a B plate, platform top, two uh, cutting plates. Sometimes you use one, sometimes you use both. So... They're the same thickness, but I would still count them as two. So we're up to four plates. Your, oh, this is out of alphabetical order. Your decutting plate, your embossing mat, and then a shim on top of that. <laughs> so maybe the embossing um, rubber mat doesn't really count as a plate because even, I think the Bear Craft one, I think has one too. Um, and it's really just to either do some embossing with your dies, which um, maybe isn't something that's very common. So, so even if we take that out, it's still a lot of plates. 
Now, one of the nice things with the uh, Spellbinders Universal Plate system is I showed a moment ago the guide that they give for if you were to use other brand products, which I really love because it just shows that they acknowledge the fact that there are uh, that crafters, you, you know, we craft with a lot of different brands, so it's nice to know what is not only compatible to work with their system, but they tell you exactly what the plate combination is. So what they recommend for the Sizzix embossing is a platform, and um, I think it was two cutting plates. Um, and so I I just went with what they recommended. Um, oh, I was wrong on that. Their 2D folder is two cutting plates, but their 3D folder is one cutting plate. So that was that was the combination. A platform, embossing folder, and then their C cutting plate. So that was the Spellbinders universal plate system sandwich. And this is the resulting panel. So here's a side by side of the two. And pretty, pretty darn good, I would say. I don't think they're significantly different from one another. I think they're both pretty close. Um, maybe there's, maybe there's like a smidge more detail on the one that went through the Spellbinders machine, but not, not a ton. And there's still like a little bit more room to to get this um get more pressure through this if needed, but I feel like I feel like they are pretty comparable. So that is the 3D emboss uh, from Sizzix through both the uh, Beercraft machine and through the um, the Spellbinders machine and their plate system. So that's that's it for the different various different brand embossing folders side by side with the Spellbinders machine. Now let's get into Better Press. So the Better Press is a Spellbinders um, tool, and here are two panels. Uh, take a moment to see if you can guess which one went through the beer craft and which one went through the spellbinders machine. So in case lighting makes a difference, <laughs> I'll swap them. So there's this one. And here's that one. And I'll tilt it because I know sometimes the emboss might be a little bit hard to see. Let's go ahead and switch those up again. <laughs> Just give you a nice close up. See if you can see a difference. Um, so, thoughts? Uh, <laughs> make your guesses, uh, leave them in the comments, let me know what you think. But, uh, exact same paper stock here, this is the uh, Cranes Lectra 100% cotton card. I always put it in pretty much every video where I do a better press, um, it's in, it's in those videos, but I should leave a link to it in my standard supplies because I do use it so much. But I do find the Cranes Lectra to be a little bit more, um, I should say really a lot more affordable than the Spellbinders 100% cotton card. And the results are pretty, pretty similar. Um, so, so I've really enjoyed using it. Um, but nevertheless, it's the same on both sides. So, uh, you know, that part is equal. And same ink and everything. So let's see. This one is the Spellbinders on the right. And this is the Beer Craft on the left. Pretty comparable, I would say. Uh, I don't know if you would agree, but I would say they're pretty, pretty dead on. And it worked great. Um, so I ended up to get this through, um, now with the glimmer, with the 
um, better press. If you haven't used either of those systems before, this, this is what the better press looks like. So it does have its own platform base and its own kind of, um, cutting mat or top plate, I should just say. So it's, and the glimmer is very similar. It's got its own platform and its own top plates. So I, what I did was I used their, you know, that whole stack, right? The, that whole system as is. Now, when I ran it through the Beercraft, what I did was just use the dials to get the pressure that um, I felt I needed to match the um, Spellbinders running it through the Platinum machine. So what that ended up being for the letterpress was letterpress setting, because there actually is a letterpress setting. It's the same as your 2D emboss. And then I did a minus three to increase um, the pressure. So second dial here, minus three. So with the better press, I did 2D emboss slash letterpress at the top, minus three at the bottom, and that got me a result that pretty darn similar. It's actually more of a deboss because um, I could have lightened up on the pressure uh, a little bit because it's actually a slightly deeper deboss um, than, than the going through the platinum. But that's that's the result. It looks it's gorgeous. I think it I think it's great. Works uh, fabulous, and so I was able to do all of my um, better press panels through the Beercraft in this last um, four to six weeks or so. Um, now with the Glimmer, it's the same thing or, or similar thing where you have. The you've got your glimmer machine, which is about kind of you know the same size as a platform, um, and then you have your glimmer plate and um, and then some additional plates, uh, top plates on top of that. So taking taking that sandwich as as is, so the way that it's been designed. The settings that I arrived at for glimmering is really simple. It's just the 2D emboss. So the exact same setting as letter pressing, um, but no fine tuning at all. And what I came up with is, um, okay, so now I'll look at these two panels, see if you can spot which one is which. So A or B. Which one is the beer craft? A on the left or B on the right? And if you need to see it in different lighting, I can I can mix it up um, on the side by side there. Get them nice and close. So that was the original order. A or B. Um, Pretty, pretty good, right? There's no, um, no real overfoiling. I would say this might be a little bit underfoiled, the A, possibly. It's like a small little spot there, but I don't know if my foil was scratched. Uh, but it, on the T, there's also a little bit underfoiling there. This seems more solid on this side. If I if I had to give it to one, I would give it to this one in terms of the more perfect foiling. Um, this is on all of the papers, by the way, have been hammer mill 100 pound. I sh probably should have started with that. So that's another thing that's going to make a difference, you know, if you're um, figuring out how to dial in yours. But um, if you have your guesses in for the glimmer, A versus B, which one is Beercraft? The answer is B. <laughs> B is actually, which is the slightly more perfect foiling in my estimation. Um, so that's the result there. <laughs> So, a little surprising, but actually the 
bureaucrat uh, came out on top with that. And that's just set, setting it at the 2D emboss um, at the top and nothing different at the bottom. And those are those are the results. I did do it a second time just just to just to test a little bit. <laughs> so again, A or B, which one is the beer graft? So here's close up look at of A. Little bit of do you see that there's a little bit of overfoiling right there? Just a smidge, and this probably that if I took a white eraser to that, I think I can, I think I could get that out. Uh, but I wanted to leave it just, just so that you could see. But the emboss is pretty, or the glimmer, the foiling is pretty, pretty solid, pretty good. Otherwise, this is panel A. This is panel B. Uh, I would say this is fairly perfect. Maybe a, a spot or two of overfoiling. I think that's just a scratch in my foil. That looks like a scratch, not actual underfoiling. Um, so, did you get your guess in A or B, which one is the Beercraft? So, the answer is Beercraft is on the left. Beercraft was A in this case. Um, so pretty close. I would say um, it it would maybe seem like um, like there's more pressure at the 2D setting um, because we got a little bit of over uh, foiling here, but not not really a ton. So pretty comparable, I would say. So glimmering worked just fine through the bear craft machine uh, with the spellbinder system of uh, glimmering. So pretty darn good. So really I was able to, um, like I said, I wanted to use this as my one and only if I could. And there were only the, the, the couple of occasions where I was die cutting something that had very specific positioning and I just needed more space to actually position my plates in such a way that I could get the die to cut through exactly where I wanted. But that's solved by a larger machine. So if this was the full A4, like the nine inch wide um, machine, then uh, there wouldn't have been a problem at all. So that's more to do with size than with the, um, the performance of the machine itself. And I really like this machine. I think if, as it compares to... Um, as it compares to other manual die cutting machines, uh, specifically the Platinum, because that's what I have and that's what I'm familiar with, I I like it a lot. Um, I like the fact that there's only the three plates. I like the fact that you do all of your fine tuning uh, with the dials on the side. And there's really nothing to dislike. <laughs> it really works um, pretty well. Um, I did, I did run the, a, um, a steel rule die through just in case, um, it ha I used the scoreboards die. So just in case you are interested, um, in this sandwich, I don't use a t I actually have quite a few <laughs> big dies and scoreboards dies, but, um, I don't use them a ton. Um, but I did experiment just, just to be complete in this review. The, um, sandwich combination I used was, um, the die, um, and the magic mat. <laughs> and I cut face down like that. And I ran that through at the letterpress setting. So that's the 2D emboss letterpress setting minus two. So a little bit tightened it to a minus two. And that's that's how I cut through the um, scoreboards die and and it worked great. So so that's um 
and I don't, I think scoreboards, bigs, I think they're all the same thickness. It's just, I think the metal inside the scoreboards is a little bit different because it's got metal that's raised to the point where it will cut through your paper. Um, and then it's got metal that's maybe set um, a little bit deeper inside so that all it does is score as opposed to cut through. So that's that. And um, as I was saying, I really like this machine. Uh, I would say if you are a, if you don't have any machine at all, I think this is a fabulous one to get because it's, um, it can really get through, get you the pressure that you need. You can do fine tune adjusting. But for me, I found that when I hand crank through at the sandwich combinations and the settings that I um, just shared, I felt like it was a lot easier to crank through. Like it was, it required less muscle, less uh, strain than my platinum because, and I don't know, I don't know why that is. Um, I don't know if it's because when I'm dialing things in, I'm dialing them to just the point where it'll run through and and get me the results that I want without too much excessive pressure. So that ultimately means that everything kind of rolls through pretty comfortably. Like nothing feels extra strenuous. Whereas with the Platinum, especially with like the that Sizzix 3D embossing folder, like it took a lot of... Um, you know, elbow grease to crank that through. And so I don't know if that's just a factor of, well, they have to bucket it into some plate combination. And so it's preferable to give us a recommendation that's a little bit more pressure than maybe, you know, the just enough amount of pressure so that you get, you know, good results rather than, you know, just under, like if they don't have the perfect plate combination to get you like exactly where it needs to be, they're going to overshoot a little bit so that you still get good results uh, rather than undershoot. And so I don't know if that's, that's the reason um, behind that, but I just feel like with the Platinum machine, and granted my machine, my Platinum machine's kind of old also, so it's the Fun Stamper's Journey one, so it's lime green. Uh, the newer ones, maybe they're a little bit different, but it felt like cranking it through was pretty strenuous <laughs> um, for some things. So I would kind of put, you know, give the Bearcraft machine a bit of an edge for that as well. I feel like in terms of being friendly to, you know, your your body, especially being a manual cutting machine, um, this one seems a little bit less strain and um, just seemed easier. But on that, I would say that just as a tip to uh, if you're, let's say, your right hand dominant, I would maybe, you know, every, you know, couple weeks or every month or whatever, turn the machine so that you're using your left hand. Um, that way you're not constantly put whatever manual machine you're using, right? Just use, use your left hand occasionally. And that way you're not always putting all of the strain um, and that repetitive cranking motion through the one arm. Um, the other thing that I do and, um, you know, take it or leave it, but what I do is sometimes I'll have my machine set this way and so I'm cranking like this. Sometimes I'll actually change it so that the machine is this way and then instead of cranking, you know, forward and back in that motion, I'm cranking left to right. And part of the reason I do that is so that... I'm actually rotating, you know, my arms and my shoulder in different ways because what leads to injury is the exact same repetitive motion. So if you're rotating, you know, uh, circularly this way, 
as opposed to this way, you're changing things up a little bit. And then, you know, swapping from left hand to right hand, you're kind of balancing it out a little bit and, you know, equalizing <laughs> the stress to your body. So, you know, whatever manual uh, machine you use, I, I would recommend, you know, those two things just to change it up a little bit and, and have this be less, um, less of a strain on your body. Now, in terms of, I had mentioned um, uh, how, how I went about, you know, building this little cheat sheet of uh, settings. Part of it is to just kind of understand, you know, what's happening when you change these dial settings. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but basically um, in here, there's these rollers. Um, you can kind of see them a little bit. It's kind of hard to get at an angle, but it's the, it's those metal things. Um, there's a roller at the top. There's a roller at the bottom. It's the silver thing there. And when you are, um, cranking, you know, these dial settings, it's actually moving like this, the top dial, you can see it as you crank, it's moving the, um, that top, see how it moves the top roller. So, that's what's changing when you rotate this top dial. So right now the dial is set to die cut, which is the one closest to me if the knobs are on my left. And that's, that's at the lowest position um, for that top roller. That's the lowest position. So that's going to be basically your tightest combination or your tightest sort of um, spacing between here, between the two rollers. And that's because dies are fairly thin uh, as compared to a 2D embossing folder or a 3D embossing folder. So that's why it, they have to bring the rollers in a little bit more so that you still have enough pressure to actually uh, cut through your paper. And so understanding you know, what, what these dials do. And, um, I didn't actually measure how much, <laughs> you know, the movement is, but you can see, you know, um, the 3D emboss is the one that produces the widest gap. So that's the largest opening. Um, and then kind of similarly, like the fine tune style at the bottom, this is the tightest, so you can see, and that's the um, the loose looses. So that's plus five there. Like if it helps, look at that the gap, because you can see the gap um, between the roller and the plastic really changes. And so that's what the bottom dial is doing. The bottom dial is moving that lower roller. And at the loosest setting, plus five, the reason why it's plus is it's because it's increasing the distance between the two rollers. So that's why it's plus five. You're, you're increasing the distance between the two rollers. So in effect, you are decreasing the amount of pressure as the plates go through. And then this is a minus five. So that's the tightest you can make it. And that's because you're decreasing the distance. So they use plus and minus to kind of uh, denote the gap between the two rollers. So a decrease in the uh, gap means the rollers are are closer together. So if you feed the same sandwich through, because the rollers are closer together, that's going to increase the amount of pressure and um, give you a different result. And so that's that's the premise of, of what is actually happening when you move these dials. And that's, you know, the first um, thing that I wanted to 
in my head understand. So I was moving these dials and just seeing how, like how much movement there is in the in the rollers, and what exactly it is that that the dials are are actually doing. And so um, you saw that the top dial, uh, as I was switching it between the three settings, it I mean it moved a lot. You, you could really see uh, the that top roller. Uh, move up and down the bottom roller not a ton so that's really um i mean as the name would suggest i mean that's for the micro uh adjustments and and it sure is so because there was a ton of difference between all the way one way and then all the way in the opposite direction so with that understanding um knowing that at the 3d emboss that that's the widest gap that moving the largest dial or the top um, uh, dial will yield. And die, if it's on the die cutting setting, that's going to be the, um, you know, the smallest gap uh, as governed by the top roller. So there was that as a starting point just to understand, you know, um, how much uh how much room there is for movement and so the other thing i i already touched upon was to actually understand the um the standard for what beercraft uh recommends and using as a baseline essentially their cutting mat and their adapter for the various settings that they um, that they recommend, and so by using their measurements and measuring the thickness of their cutting mat, their adapter, and um, their embossing folder, for example. Um, so what I did was basically if I add these. Uh, the numbers up so for the standard embossing for example it was two millimeters plus three millimeters because that was what they recommended their platform the embossing folder and a cutting mat so essentially if t if i'm gonna run something through the 2d emboss slash letterpress setting i'm looking at aiming for five millimeter thick in terms of the sandwich combination and so that's essentially kind of what I was aiming for whenever I figured tried to figure out a combination for any of the other products that I was using I was trying to stack up the right combination of plates to get to five millimeters thick if I couldn't do that that's when I started to adjust the top dial um, to get me a little bit closer ballpark wise to where I needed to be and um, and then you know once I was close then I would get uh, fine-tuned with the bottom dial so you know hopefully that kind of makes a little bit of sense um, but really you know just start anywhere and then you can if it's not going through don't force it because with this machine it doesn't actually require i mean it really doesn't feel like you need to put too too much pressure to go through um you know or not that much effort to crank through and get a really good result so that's sort of one of the reasons why i like this machine is that it may not feel like it's doing a ton, but it's it's going to work ultimately in the end. But as I was saying, um, you know, that five millimeters was about, you know, kind of the uh, the ballpark on the letterpress setting. So just, just as a for instance, the Sizzix embossing folder is over that. It's 6.35 millimeters. And what I measured the standard sandwich through for um, the beer crafts uh, sandwich and embossing folder was five millimeters at 2D. So 
if I'm trying to run something that's thicker than five millimeters through, then I need to increase the gap. And so that's why I went to um, the 3D emboss setting because that's more of a gap than, um, than the 2D. So that gives me a little bit more room to actually pass the sandwich through. But going through at that that just even allows the combination to go through of just the platform and the um, embossing folder which is fairly minimal it's the platform plus the, the Sizzix 3d embossing folder so you can't really get too much thinner of a uh, sandwich combination than that and the top setting being at the 3D emboss is the largest gap that the top setting will give me. So then the next number I need to fine tune is the bottom dial. Um, and because it's it's too big of a gap um, at the 3D, at the 2D it won't even go through. <laughs> so the only option is to widen the gap at the top and then further and then tighten it back some because a negative number remember that that decreases the gap. <laughs> so that's why I had to decrease. I I ended up somewhere between 3.5 and 4, but 4 is actually where where I felt like it, it got me comparable results as compared to the um platinum machine. So that's that's exactly how I approach dialing in uh, something like the Sizzix 3D folder. So like I said, the standard for the Beercraft one was the embossing folder at two millimeters plus the cutting mat at the 2D emboss setting. So that's five millimeters at the 2D emboss setting. If I try to pass a 3D folder that's six inches um, thick at that 2D setting, it's way too thick. It's a lot thicker than that five millimeters. And um, and it's not surprising that it wouldn't work through the, the 2D setting. So I switched it to 3D, but if you go through the 3D emboss setting, it was too loosey goosey and it wasn't enough pressure to get an emboss. Now you can play with then throwing in, you know, a plate, <laughs> maybe putting in an adapter plate, um, and seeing if that will go through. What I did instead was I just played with the bottom dial until I got the pressure that I needed to get the result that I wanted. So there's a lot of different ways you can arrive at the end, the same end result. You can play with a combination of the three plates that come provided. And just because you do have the dials for fine tuning, if you wanted to do cardstock shims, there's nothing stopping you from doing cardstock shims. You could still totally do that with, um, with this system just like you would with um, any other machine but uh, so that's that's why I kind of caveat everything um, by saying you know this is what worked for me these are the plate combinations and the dial settings that I found success with but you know there's multiple ways to reach the same result, you might get better results um, by playing around with different settings, different plate combinations, different dials, different other shims that you might be using. And like I said, you know, I, I like die cutting into a magic mat. You might not. So this became, you know, one of the mats in my sort of standard sandwich as I was using this machine. And that might not be something that, that you have in your craft room or that you like to use. So I would just experiment. Um, you don't have to measure everything <laughs> precisely like I've done, you know, with my little caliper here, but that you know, it helped me to approach it that way just so that, you know, I could understand the numbers behind what was going on here. But certainly trial and error, you know, works just fine too. Just knowing that the general premise of it is that this top dial is moving your top roller 
and it's going to be the largest movements that you're going to get. This bottom dial moves the bottom roller and, um, and it's pretty, you know, it's very micro those adjustments. And so you really can dial it in to be just what you want, but you're not going to see a huge, this is the equivalent of like a sheet of cardstock, two sheets of cardstock, etc. So, um, so that allows you to do all that sort of, um, kind of fine tuning to get that extra little oomph if you want when you're embossing, for example. So that's, uh, that's kind of how I approached, uh, dialing in the settings and that's, that's my over arching kind of review after having used the machine for a good four to six um, weeks or so. Will I continue to use it? Um, you know, to be honest, I, I probably won't, <laughs> but only because of this reason. One, um, I did purchase the, an electric die cutting machine, the mini Empress and the electric machine, it just sh saves my shoulder. And so I don't have like that manual, uh, kind of strain on my arms and my shoulder from having to manually crank. So if you, you know, the manual or the electric machines, I feel like will be a little bit friendlier on your body. Um, and the Mini Empress was at a fairly decent price and it pretty much covers about 70 or 80% of my die cutting because most dies are small. <laughs> so that, that, you know, does wonders for actual die cutting. Embossing, not so much. And it definitely won't better press and it definitely won't glimmer. So, um, but because I do a lot of die cutting, it is saving my shoulder quite a lot from the stream. And I already have the larger platinum machine, which allows me to do partial die cutting in the ways that I want or die cutting directly into my card front the way that I would want. And my better press will fit through that. My glimmer will fit through that. And so since I already have that, I feel like I don't really need this machine. Um, you know, the reason why I have it is because I, I actually asked Beercraft if, if, uh, they were interested in me reviewing it and they actually, they did send me, uh, the machine to try out and I love it. So to be honest, personally, would I use it given what I already have? Probably not. But I will say if, if I did not have those other two machines, um, I would use this. I would, if I were to kind of shop <laughs> from the beginning, uh, cause this machine has been out for like a good four years. Um, if I was in the market four years ago for my first die cutting machine, I would totally get this. I would totally get this. And if I could afford it, I would get the, the larger size one too, uh, instead, because then that would allow me to do all of the partial die cutting or the die cutting into like a card front or something like that. And that way I have the one machine that does everything is, um, I feel like easier to dial in fewer plates to manage and it works great. And then it can adjust really well to other brand products uh, because of the dial settings here. So, you know, if I was if I was new to crafting and just getting into it, the machine is more affordable, I believe, than most other die cutting machines on the market. So I feel like it would be a really great choice, um, you know, short of getting an electric machine. And, you know, if your budget allows, electric machines, I think, are just going to be friendlier to your body over time because manually crank 
cranking. I felt it <laughs> in just the four to six weeks that I was using this. I really felt it because I had gotten used to using the Mini Empress, <laughs> which is the, the electric machine. And, um, and so I could definitely feel the difference of, um, you know, a hundred percent all the time doing, uh, using a manual machine. So, you know, there's that, um, just in terms of long-term overall, what's going to be friendlier to, to your body. But yeah, I mean, I, I really have no complaints, uh, about this machine in terms of its, um, you know, functionality. And I was, I was actually really happy with it. It got, um, as you saw, side by side comparison, pretty comparable results. And where it fell short a little bit, there was like room to fine tune still. So it could definitely get up to, up to par with, um, you know, what I was comparing it to, which was the Spellbinders setup. So that's sort of my you know, bottom line conclusion. I think it's a fabulous machine and um, it's available on Amazon. And um, at the time that I did the unboxing and first look, I think the six inch machine was out of stock, but uh, I'll still link to it in the description box below. I don't know what the stock situation is on it um, at the moment, but um but I'll leave links to this one and the 9-inch machine if you are curious to to check either of those out for yourself. And um, I like having it. So if... Um, and I'm not going to get rid of it. So if you have uh, questions or requests for me to try anything out in terms of, you know, trying to dial in some settings for your um, other brand products... Just let me know um, if I have something from that brand. I will um, try to figure it out and and let you know what um, what I arrived at. But um, but you know I don't I don't I don't have all the things from all the different brands, so I can't guarantee that I'll have it. But I'm more than happy to kind of experiment if uh, if there are requests out there. So. That's my review, and um, again, thank you to Bearcraft for sending it to me. Um, you know, my I think you all know if you see my product reviews that I uh, even if I'm getting something, whether I'm getting it from the company or if I've purchased it myself, uh, my thoughts on it are gonna be the same either way. <laughs> and uh, and companies know that when they send you stuff, so um, so I know that there might be a bit of skepticism. But, um, but that's, that's kind of my honest take on this machine. And, um, that's pretty much it for me. So thanks for catching this one. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have this machine and you have some thoughts on it, I'd love to hear what you think. And, uh, maybe you have different pleat combinations and dial settings. If you want to share that, that would be awesome too. I'm sure, um, folks would be curious. I would be curious as well. So, uh, if you found a setting that works really well for you, uh, let me know that in the comments too. Thanks again, and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.